autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars, semi-automated vehicles, whatever they're labeled, they're coming. The technology is advancing and rapidly. But what else needs to happen before they hit the road? We have Jones Day partner Paul Rafferty here to talk about it. I'm Dave Dalton. You're listening to Jones Day Talks Technology. Today's focus, autonomous vehicles. Welcome to Jones Day Talks Technology. We're here with Paul Rafferty. Paul is a partner in the firm's business and tort litigation practice. Paul has more than 30 years of corporate trial experience. In addition, he offers guidance on autonomous vehicle regulations and policy in the U.S. Paul, thanks for talking with us today. There is a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm about autonomous vehicles right now, and justifiably so, I think. But let's cut through the fog for a second. What strikes you right now is the single most significant factor regarding developments relating to autonomous vehicles. I think by far the most significant factor worldwide is that countries are all collectively struggling to regulate the development, testing, and deployment of autonomous vehicles. And by autonomous vehicles, I mean automated and fully autonomous vehicles. And as we're seeing, a patchwork is slowly forming here, but it's a patchwork that differs as we look around the globe. At the same time, industry's ability to stay abreast of all of this and to develop products that comply is what probably will result in the greatest challenge for industry relative to what the countries are doing in terms of their regulations. Okay, so regulations are where the focus needs to be right now. So let's start here in the United States. Washington being Washington, I can't imagine there's not a lot going on right now. Well, you know, that, that's absolutely right. You know, the, the beginning of uh, what is now occurring in Washington, D.C., really got rolling, I think, in the fall of 2016 when the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration passed its guidance. Its fall 2016 guidance was really a formal kickoff for autonomous vehicles. Now, interestingly, before the federal government really began to step in, the states then flowed from uh, NHTSA's guidance. In the first six months of 2017, it seemed like every week a different state passed or proposed new regulations pertaining to autonomous vehicles. Super interesting, very exciting to follow. But there was a problem. The regulations or proposed regulations offered by the different states varied significantly. And so as 2017 has progressed, we've seen industry become more concerned and move more to Washington again to ask the federal government to step in and help regulate this new and exciting area. And how did D.C. respond? In June of 2017, Congress did step in, passing H.R. 3388, what it calls its Self-Drive Act. Still falling short in some areas, such as defining product liability, consumer privacy issues and the like, but still, I think the first step in a series of steps where ultimately the federal government will step in and preempt much of what is going on right now in the states. Now, that's just the House bill, correct? That's correct. That's correct. At the same time, NHTSA is also following up with further guidance and very recently passed what we call 2.0, what it calls a vision for safety. Still, right now, industry in the United States has to balance ongoing state regulations with increasing federal control and Department of Transportation guidance. That's a lot for a young industry to deal with. Tell me about Europe. Is it easier to ramp up and advance new technology there than it is in the United States? You know, in many ways, Europe is suffering from the same issues or facing the same issues as the United States, but it's a bit different. There, the European Commission is very much involved in autonomous vehicles. In fact, it has set as one of Europe's most important objectives uh, the development of autonomous vehicles. And so the European Commission is really encouraging development and innovation. In pursuit of that, what they call Gear 2030 is an initiative that really gathered the best in industry to provide guidance on automotive, IT, and cyber concerns to create and deliver recommendations to establish the best policies and regulatory framework for autonomous vehicles. The problem right now in Europe is that different countries have established different rules and regulations, and a manufacturer will need to develop a vehicle that complies with all of them. So when you look at some of the countries now, you have differences in road and traffic laws, mm -hmm. civil laws, product liability directives, and safety considerations. This is going to create obstacles. And what about the timing of implementation across the EU? The countries are moving forward at different paces. Uh, if we look at some of the leaders 
The United Kingdom, for example, they passed a code of practice for autonomous vehicles in July of 2015. France, closely behind August of 2016, passed different regulations within its new effort called the New Industrial France Initiative. And, of course, many consider Germany to be a leader in Europe. These countries are helping to define what the future will be for autonomous vehicles, but there's still a lot of work ahead to get all the countries on the same page. And how can they coordinate and deal with all that? Yeah, there really is a need for binding international legislation that sews each of the countries together. You know, fortunately, they get help from the UN Economic Commission for Europe, the UNECE. There are 56 member countries there, and historically, the UNECE, through its Inland Transport Committee, has been very successful, passing over 50 agreements and conventions for the development of transportation modes. Now, I think we'll see the UNECE continue to be dominant in conjunction with member states and international partners. It will help Europe develop a new framework for autonomous vehicles and autonomous systems. That's encouraging, and they do have a precedent there. I guess it would be easy to assume that every country and region battles these sorts of problems. Some regions deal with a simpler and hence a more straightforward regulatory structure and government. I think one example of this might be the United Arab Emirates. The UAE is also very excited about autonomous vehicle technology. Interestingly, the Dubai Metro is the longest driverless metropolitan transportation system in the world. That's amazing. In 2016, Mercedes completed successful trials of self-driving vehicles with the blessing of the Emirates Authority for Standardization as well as the Dubai Road and Transportation Authority. In fact, by 2030, UAE's Prime Minister, also the ruler of Dubai, has set a goal of 25% of all journeys should be fully autonomous vehicles. Why is this important? The thing that's significant about all of this is that all of the organizations within the, the UAE are on the same page. And that, I think, is facilitating very productive, prompt development of autonomous vehicle technology and products. So the UAE seems to have an easier path, at least right now. Are there other regions that have similar advantages? Yeah, I think there are. Um, take Australia as an example. Australia seems to have a focused uh, government and platform to quickly develop autonomous vehicles. In November of 2016, its transport ministers okayed a phased program for autonomous vehicle operations by 2020. And Australia's National Transport Commission the NTC, which is charged with developments for autonomous vehicles, has made steady progress. This past May, the NTC released national guidelines to permit trials of autonomous vehicles. The following month in June, it returned to examine a regulatory framework and an option for autonomous vehicles for the future. Its goals are also very aggressive, but I think very achievable. By the end of 2018, it wants to instill new driving laws for autonomous vehicles. It wants to handle and develop appropriate insurance schemes, and it also wants to have regulations to manage vehicle data as well as to manage consumer privacy issues. What are the other countries leading on this? Uh, I think China also has a unified governmental scheme, and they have been very enthusiastic about developing autonomous vehicle technology. In fact, they have really been speaking about being the leaders in artificial intelligence. The United States, I think, is also a leader right now in the development of artificial intelligence in and around Silicon Valley and elsewhere. Another leader in artificial intelligence right now is Israel, doing an excellent job developing the brains, if you will, for autonomous vehicles in the future. And of course, we can't forget Russia. Russia also, I think, will become one of the leaders in the development of autonomous vehicles and is currently underway. Uh, with quick and prompt developments in that regard. Well, from what we know about tech emphasis in Israel and Russia, that's really not surprising. Why is this important to a Jones Day client? Well, I, I think it's important to a Jones Day client because our clients uh, tend to develop products that are based on a global reach. We're not looking to develop products uh, in any one state or any one country. Our clients need to understand the international framework uh, that exists throughout the world. And so our clients, in order to develop a single technology and a single product that can compete successfully without significant modification country to country, 
will probably have the global edge in terms of the sale of those products. Well, you've done a very good job of explaining the challenges uh, once you cross jurisdictions and, and things aren't always cohesive. So Jones Day does have the capability in terms of uh, global reach, uh, boots on the ground, if you will, to assist clients that are, that are pursuing these markets. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, our mantra, one firm worldwide, is probably never more applicable than here. Even just based on our dialogue, if you look, we have significant presence in the United States. I think the leaders in Europe, the United Kingdom, France, and Germany, we have boots on the ground in those countries. Uh, the United Arab Emirates, we're firmly focused and present in Dubai. In fact, we're published in the United Arab Emirates on autonomous vehicles, and we also have locations in Australia, Asia, and Russia, all of the major markets. Um, and we have people who are interested in autonomous vehicles, and we're ready to help our clients develop the best technology and the best products worldwide using what we know to help them succeed. Paul, this has been informative and actually kind of amazing. If you had to come up with one thing that you've run across as you've studied and analyzed this new world of autonomous vehicles, what truly stands out? Something that really stood out to me is Dubai's statement that they want to develop a flying taxi. Can you imagine someday walking out of your hotel, getting into a taxi, speaking to the taxi that has no driver inside it, and then that vehicle taking off and landing on top of a building six miles away and delivering you to your destination. That's absolutely amazing to me. Well, Paul, it's amazing to me, too. In fact, I'm so amazed. I'm going to let you go first. You try it out. Let me know how the flying taxi works and report back, and, and we'll let everybody know. One other thing, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, for more information like this, Jones Day has recently published a white paper, Legal Issues Related to the Development of Automated, Autonomous, and Connected Cars. Paul Rafferty, who you heard from today, worked on that, along with Bob Katner in Dallas, and Chuck Mullenberg in our Pittsburgh office, and a host of other Jones Day lawyers. Go to jonesday.com, hit the publications page, you'll find it there, or just Google Jones Day White Paper Autonomous Vehicles, and that'll get you there too. Paul, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. You've been listening to Jones Day Talks. I'm Dave Dalton. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to Jones Day Talks. Comments heard on Jones Day Talks should not be construed as legal advice regarding any specific facts or circumstances. The opinions expressed on Jones Day Talks are those of the attorneys appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect those of the firm. For more information, please visit www.jonesday.com.